So you want to talk to your little furry ones? Let's go, people. Hi friends, Kelly McClure is Psychic Medium. So good to see you. Thanks for coming on. Um, we're just going to chat for a minute, let people get on. This is strictly connecting with furry ones, little pets and animals that might be important to you. Or reptiles. Yeah, or reptiles. That's true because I have seen crazy little um, crawly creatures. I will say that Sometimes um, I think that your spirit animals are your guides. So some usually it's hopefully, you know, who you you want to talk to and your little pets that you've lost. But sometimes I might see something around you that's your spirit guide. So what I ask from you guys is to give the first name of the animal that you want to talk to. If you want to give the um, breed or kind of animal that it is, that's fine. But that's not necessary. I, my intention is to connect with the name and the spirit that you want to talk to. It would be really, really helpful if you guys let us know when we get to you that you're still on. Um, and, and by the way, tonight's only pets. Um, it, if, if you're still on and that, so, so if we come to you and we say your name, you're going to go, yep, I'm still here. And then when we give references and you want to validate that, that helps a lot of people, but it only helps them if you say, yes, it was a dog. Yes, they had this. Yes, they had a red collar or whatever, but be specific about what you're validating because that's how other people can know that. Oh my gosh, if, if she can see your animals, then I know that my little pet is still around, even if I didn't get a reading tonight. So validate specifically what you're coming through with. That helps with the reading so much. But generally, you know, I here's why I think that pets can come through. I think animals have no resistance to this type of uh, communication. I don't think that they have the idea that this is impossible. So they're like, sure, yeah, I'll be here. Um, and, and most people might have an idea that this isn't possible, but animals don't care. And I think it's pretty easy to read for them. So my intention is to connect with you with you, your pets. So, um, Obviously, I'm not going to be able to get to everybody, but if you stay with us till the end, you're going to get a code so that you can book a reading for a discount. And all, I guarantee all my private work, if you don't get your answer, you don't pay. Uh, okay, ignore the scammers, you guys. There's people that come on and they try to get your attention because you're not getting a reading for me. So they try to grab you. They're going to tell you all kinds of bullshit. Those are scammers. And my heart goes out to them because my belief is that they don't believe they can legitimately create their own business or reality. And so they kind of hop on to other people's. And I've been following a really cool guy on um, TikTok lately, and he has tons of scammers. And I'm like, yeah, I get it. I get it because it happens all the time. So I promise I'll never come to you and say that you have to register for something in order to get a reading or that the angels have given me something to tell you and that you have to pay in advance. That's not me. In fact, I can't even request you to friend me from my business page. So those are scammers and they come on this all the time. Um, okay. So please don't incessantly ask for your request because that just builds up the feed. And honestly, this is luck of the draw. I'm leaving it at spirit of, about who gets a reading and we, we have no control over that. So, um, you know, you can ask once or twice, but it's not going to help to delight, be incessant. Okay. Anything else? Stay, uh, go ahead. You can ask them to share your video. Oh, it'd be great. Yeah, share. And like, if you have friends who have um, little pets who've, who've passed, share the video. Share it to them and say, uh, yeah, this legit um, pet psychic on right now. Okay. Okay. Okay, I'm ready. Hang on. All right, hang on. I got to get back to my screen here. Okay. 
So Super B Sally, what a great name. Um, as for Blackie or Buddha. Okay, so hold on one second while I tune into that energy. Um, here is what I'm seeing. Very, very small, low to the ground, two dog energies playing with each other. So I think they might have known each other or both have known you and are both in spirit now playing really rough. And the rut and the play is rough. Uh, when I go to Blackie, that to me is a small, not sure what kind of animal, but something as small as like a Frenchie or a something that size. I'm really just like grabbing a, to a toy and scruffing it. But then when it lays it down, it comes up to you and says, so now I'm seeing um, that little rough, short haired animal energy coming up to you and laying their um, face against you. So you might feel that sometimes. And then like, okay. So seriously, like a hundred to zero, like super, super playful and active and then coming and laying next to you. One of the things I think that I'm not sure if I'm connecting with them both in the same realm, but I, I specifically feel like I'm connecting with Blackie or this energy and also feeling like you did. Okay. You had to do special things to either um, a lot of vet bills. Um, so something happened with them where the, where you felt like you had to put a lot of money in rescuing them. And then I'm feeling like there's in the back legs, like a slit or a, injury or a surgery and then because you did all this they got to live happy and and maybe we're also connected because i knew you were asking for buddha too but i'm still feeling like i'm connected with the first one so in that when you went above and beyond and possibly even stretched your resources or asked other people to help with um, a surgery. So let me know if that makes sense. I think your lovely animals are around you. And, and I think that they're um, thanking you for that. Okay, next. So just so you know, Kelly, for some reason, because I can't see oh. the comments on my Facebook page on my phone. So I can't see what they're validating right now. So, I'm trying so to I just saw that. Sally say both of them are cats. So I, I'm just wondering still if, so let me look, they're cats, not dogs. So now I'm wondering if, if the energy fits for uh, the one with the, the surgery. So let me know. All right. Um, so sorry to say we can't see your feedback right now, but please give it anyway, because we'll try to catch up. Um, I was able to see that. Um But I also feel like what I'm seeing is small energy is um, still the same level, same size, same energy. Just feel like they're so let me know if that makes sense. Okay. Okay. okay yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So. Brian uh, says, "My my hi, my cat hat, my cat Lucy. Hold on. So I do have a, a cat crossing my desk. It's not very big. It's multicolored, short-ish hair. Sat down and laid. Loves to play with things on my desk." Huh. Also feels like maybe um, we're rescued or or brought in from another home, and gratitude about that. Lucy to me feels like I don't really feel like I'm gone. I think I'm still here and I'm in a mess with things. So I think that I the things on the left side of my desk 
like as soon as I get to work or on my computer or whatever, I'm going to look and things are messed with. Right. Let's see. Uh, also, I feel like it's a very brief um, interaction with this cat. So maybe you didn't have them for very long. Maybe only a few years. Can you tell me if, if that fits for you and if you know if that makes sense? Now, I did see on the feed that um, Blackie and the the pets that I was talking to before did not fit for the cats. She That was not true for her. So if you guys know of any two dogs that really fit that, like absolutely and technically, let me know. Okay. Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to block scammers as fast as I see them. <laughs> so bear with us, guys. We're trying to block scammers. We're trying to read your feed as fast as possible. Um, but sometimes when when spirit comes through um, and technology is a little bit behind, we have to catch up. So hold on one sec. All right. Hi, I'd love to talk with my beloved chief. Okay. So B. McWin wants to talk with Chief. Hmm. So when I ask for Chief, I actually see two different things. One is a very large dog way out in the yard, a couple of multicolored um kind of maybe a, a white and then a darker color playful but i'm not sure that's the name of chief what i see right in front of them is a smaller animal running up to the house and saying uh, like if you say the name chief the smaller animal is actually identifying with that and that looks to me more like a either a smaller dog or cat and uh, all solid one color with this other animal running up on him so tell me if chief had another friend or a a, a bigger dog that was their friend um i also get a, a weird heart thing so i think that um there was no way to extend chief life any more than you already did um, I think that you brought in everything you could and, and, but I'm feeling like this is, this is a no go. Uh, okay. So let me know if you're still here and if that makes sense to you. Oh, so they said that she was a German shepherd and now we have a white Westie. So the smaller dog is now, so let me know if chief, uh, if you tried everything you could and you couldn't, I have to let you know that I think that she was very, very um, grateful, not only that you did everything that you could, but that you didn't make him suffer. So I think a lot of times that we, we spend more time trying to save human life and um, thinking we should have saved uh animal life and they're just kind of great they're just kind of like nope it's good but i want you to watch the behavior of your current dog to see if it plays with chief in the backyard because chief loved to run the perimeter so now i feel like the other dog is looking like not so much wanting to run it but looking at the perimeter okay okay Rocco. So uh, Juliet wants to talk about Rocco. So I'll tell you that just now as I'm breathing and bringing in this beautiful energy, I do feel it's a dog and not very big and it came in and laid down right in front of me light-colored, short-haired, uh, hmm. The way that it laid down is not so much an illness or, or an objection about anything, but more like a training. 
And do you have three kids? Because it, it, so this is feeling like it's telling me that playing with three children. I do feel like a chest issue. Let me know if that makes sense with you, with Rocco. And, uh, okay. And then also this dog is telling me, look, when we have to let an animal go, often we feel bad about that, but they don't. They go up in spirit and go, we're just fine. We feel completely whole. We don't even know what you guys are upset about. And that's kind of how I feel about Rocco. Super still playing with, but I'm, I'm hearing three kids or three extended family members that are young. Mm, still feeling the chest issue with Rocco. I also feel like Rocco can live with no teeth. So maybe there was a teeth issue, but that's let us know if that makes sense to you and if you're still here, Juliet. Okay. Are you ready for another one? Yep. Oh, geez, you're on a roll. Okay. Valerie, Nola. Okay. I still want you guys, even though I'm moving along, I want you to validate what came through or what makes sense because we're all wanting to see that. Oh, Nola. So I do feel a cat energy, very calm. Huh. So what I'm seeing is a, a cat energy coming through very calm and big, but thin and laying down and moving things like, um, hmm. To me, it feels like if you guys spend a lot of time wondering whether or not you were going to get a pet and then this cat came along or this, I think it's cat, energy came along of finally, and, and you're thinking, oh my gosh, this is going to be so crazy, but it's not crazy. It's very calm and sure and kind of like a presence of just, I'm here to be with you guys. Um, that's what I'm feeling about this energy that you're asking about. I'm hoping it's Nola. I don't see a color. Sometimes I don't want spirit. Sometimes they appear to me to be silver. Like I, I think that pets are such a high vibration that they don't even appear to, to have a connection with their previous body. So they show up kind of silver. So Valerie, let me know if Nola's cat and Nala uh, is a cat. And let me know if that fits for that personality and if you're still on. Okay. And I'll tell you a little bit more. Whoever this cat is, and I think it's yours, I think it's Nala, has just now circled my table, laid down, and then is showing me an experience where I think she was supposed to or thought to have babies but then that got messed up um so so there's like baby energy that didn't come through or didn't make it or got messed up okay so okay uh i have i can see comments now but all right i mean i may not see any of hers because mine just started um, B. Macklin said, everything you said was spot on. Chief had dilated cardiomyopathy and had a heart attack. We did everything to save him, but it, it just gave out. We now have a small white puppy, Wesley, and we say that his name doesn't always list, but he does look at us like he's saying Chief. Um, he always looking outside and wanting to go in the backyard and he doesn't let him for a while, but because, oh shit. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I don't know how to, I don't know how, to, okay. Uh, because our gate was broken. Now I know why he wanted to be outside so much. He was looking for chief. Oh, okay. Thank you guys so much for that feedback. And you guys, even if we can't get it right now, please do it because 
Uh, my manager is up in the freaking mountains in a beautiful area. She doesn't get <laughs> Wi-Fi as quickly as I do, but um, please give feedback because um, even if we don't exactly know why I'm seeing what I'm seeing, I swear to God, it always makes sense for something or someone. Um, and so I thank you, BMAC. Thank you very much. Okay. Ready? Yep. Sammy, Kathleen's asking for Sammy. So I'll give you guys an example. Here's what I do. I don't know who Sammy is. I don't know if it's cat or dog. I don't know. Or a, a packet. I don't know. But what I do is I close my eyes and I have the intention to ask for a pet to connect with the person. And I say the name in my mind. So now I'm saying the name Sammy. And then suddenly something will come into my mind. Like, like right now I'm seeing for a Sam, hopefully Sammy next to her, um, a, a big, slow mo moving dog. <laughs> um, and I feel like it was old and light in color and tan, but I'm not seeing like something hyperactive that plays a lot, maybe when they were younger, but more like a friend to watch TV with or lay on a couch with and is like lighting up to her in, in spirit. It is light in color. I also see that there's some dental issues or something on the right side of the mouth. Well, hold on, left side, because the dog is facing the other direction. And then I feel like as I'm seeing the dog lay next to you, uh, the phone rings and there's a lot of things that you're supposed to deal with, but you're wanting to be with the dog or who I think is Sammy. So that's kind of how it works. It's kind of like, um, I'm not really sure what I'm seeing, but I get an image of this. Uh, other than feeling kind of bloated in my body, I don't feel any specific ailment, um, uh, with the, the, the body, nothing in the stomach, heart. I just feel bloated. So Sammy's a cat. let me know if anything else fit for that with Sammy. If you, if like the bloating, Hmm. Hmm. I feel like there, there's just this big, uh, issue with bloating in the stomach and laying next to you and not moving. Well, huh. so oh, she said nothing fit. Does anyone else know about this big kind of bloated dog? Um, that might fit. Let me know because uh, they're not going away. So one of the things that I do if I'm not sure that I'm connecting with a specific animal is that I go, okay, so here's what I'm seeing. It's in my mind's eye, yeah, but I get lots of feelings, lots of emotions in my body. I'm not really sure what's going on. So I look and I go, okay, are they going away? They're not going away. If they don't go away, it's not my imagination. It's something that fits for somebody. So uh, I apologize, Kathleen, if I'm not connected with Sammy the cat. Uh, I'll try to come back to that. But if anybody else knows um, if there is a dog energy that fits in that description, then it's possible that what they're saying is what you did. Here's here's a message. I was so bloated and so uncomfortable for so long that you finally had to kind of make a decision. And I was okay with that. That's what I feel like the message is, but I'm not, I'm not seeing cat. So. Okay. There's a few people that jumped on saying that it sounds like their dog. I had a dog, a big dog that passed from bloat. So there's a, my dog bloated a few days before she passed. So there's a few people. Okay like that okay. quite a few people yeah 
so um so this is kind of a phenomenon that happens where um especially when we start getting like kind of into you know our our reading and and more far along where people want or animals want to piggyback because they want you to know that they're okay oh i just got tapped on the head okay so the dogs that were in this situation where they bloated and then had to pass away or had to be put to sleep my my biggest message is you did everything you could nothing more could be done and you did the right thing i also feel like one of them or one more of them had an issue with the head so i feel like i'm kind of getting hit on the on the head here and i don't think that necessarily caused the issues of the bloating but i feel like it was a separate issue and so this animal had more than one issue it had the bloating and the everything that was going on, and then this head issue. Uh, go on. Do you know what kind of dog it might be? Yeah. Or can you describe uh, it? Yeah. It, it's a, a very uh, wide, it's a dog with a wide head. So Rottweiler or um, it's pretty big and has a wide head and has two different colors. So I'm seeing like the black and brown. So two different colors. Um, had teeth issues, so a lot of dental issues. I'm kind of feeling like the head was like hit or hit by a car or an accident where everything else was already happening. And it's probably pretty big, a 50 pound dog or bigger. Uh, so Heather Hawk says Eclipse is a black lab mixed golden retriever. He was really slow and bloated towards the end and he had dental issues. <gasps> That's him. Let me ask him what he wants to say. So you guys, I'm so sorry. Sometimes certain dogs come in and and I I, I can't ignore them like they hijack me. And and they do it because, I mean, if you were an animal who passed, you would do it too. So it's kind of like, oh my gosh. So, um, okay. So the main message is that um, everybody needs to know that this dog is fine, peaceful, at peace, and feeling well. And that the decisions that were made are okay. They were right decisions. I feel like they're thinking we should have done something more or we should have done something different. Nothing more you could have done. I'm seeing the number six. So I'm seeing either six years old or June, but kind of done and peaceful and coming into your home. And you might see things around your house. If you guys are open to like messages from your dogs, from your animals, rather than thinking like something's wrong, they can show you signs. They can like flicker lights or bang on walls or, or move around your legs and you'll feel like that kind of same rubbing against your legs. So that's what I think is going on with them. All right. Thank you. Oh, okay. So Jerry Lynn says, Jerry Lynn White is so weird. Huh. I have a history with a woman named Jerry Lynn. Our fur, fur baby doggy passed suddenly without warning in April 2022. What? We were. Maybe she meant 2021. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, oh, just, uh, just to go back real quick. Yeah. The doggy you were just reading about and you said this number six. Or June. She says it was June. All right. Thank you. So they're okay. You did everything right. And they're around you. And and there's no... They will help bring other messages. to In that situation, I feel like they want to bring messages from people. So now that you know that that animal reference is real, now you can maybe look out for your loved ones who passed. So, okay. Jerry Lynn, I'm assuming you mean April 2021. Um, and I will ask about that. 
Okay. Um, so here's what I'm feeling about that. I feel in April, 2021, that, um, there's a very large, um, dog, uh, I think it's a dog. I think it's, no, there's two of them. There's a dog who's big, like a, um, golden retriever or something like that. Um, hmm. Who's also connected to a very small fur baby who might still be alive. So like a small cat or other small animal in the house who's still alive. But this one seems to be in spirit. And I think it's more like a um, golden retriever or something fluffy with a lot of fur and and fairly good size medium to large very friendly i feel like there's such a a really cool um reference about them in their breed that it shouldn't be something that would be rescued because that would be more of a mutt but had an ailment that might have been contributed to rescuing them so let me know if you rescued a purebred. Um, and if you still have a smaller animal that they're still kind of attached to. I also feel a lot of laying down, hands, paws on the hands, running around, laying down, running around, laying down, like um, in, in a playful manner. Huh. Um, there's some numbers, 11, 11, and 12, 12 that are significant so maybe november or march or uh, december but 11 11 12 12 but this animal seems to be running around and laying down and going like this do you still have this so any feedback on that i don't see her yeah okay so if that makes sense let me know and if you have an, another animal a small dog or cat that sees them and runs around and like looks like they're playing with them i feel like that's kind of the energy okay all right let's see who else marcy says diamond hmm okay so, um, okay, Marcy, I'm seeing a very small animal that looks to me like a cat. It's very still. It's dark in color. I think it's temperamental. I think it's cat. Uh, I think it's cat because of the uh, personality, but... It's a small animal, um, temperamental, and only likes certain people and only wants certain people to be with it, but then loves those people. Now I'm seeing it kind of grow in personality, like once that, that gets established. I still feel like it's a cat, although it could be a small dog, but I, the way that the temperament is, is like... Um, I will only build trust with one person at a time. My back is hurting a great deal. So I'm... Said, Diamond is a boxer. Yeah, it's not what I'm feeling right now. My back hurts a lot right now. And... Um, uh, so... A boxer. Hold on one, hold on one sec. Um, unless Diamond the Boxer feels like it has a back issue and is leery of other people, boxers usually aren't that. So now I'm wondering if this is, um, an animal that, that is dealing with that, that family or on another level, but my back is hurting a lot. At, so I'm going to ask you, does your dog have a back issue? 
And if Diamond has something going on with they only trust certain people. Mm, that just doesn't feel like a boxer. Uh, if anybody else knows a small animal with this trait, oh, my back hurts so bad right now. I feel like I have to crack it. I feel like I need to go to the doctor. Like it hurts really bad. Could this be like someone in their family maybe? Yeah, if, if, so you guys, when I tune into a family or an animal and I feel the stuff, we have to think about, oh, go ahead. Oh, yeah, she said no bad issue and she loved everyone. Okay, this is not her, Um, but I'm still feeling it. So, um, okay, hold on, Marcy, I'll look for Diamond in a minute, but can we click to the next person and see if, if I'm just reading someone else okay oh. okay so Josie says her baby girl gizmo died one week after so in Vegas shooting the left worst possible time oh gizmo okay okay Josie I'm gonna look for gizmo Still feeling the back issue. Um, I don't think this is Gizmo. Hold on from bringing anybody else through. Let me see who this is. I'm looking for someone named James or with a J name. And I'm feeling like this animal is with them. Um, it feels small. And it feels like possibly a small dog or cat who got hit by a car and broke in the back. Oh. Okay, Did, there's quite a few people. Didn't really yeah. trust people, really leery, um, dark in color. Oh. And it took a lot of rehab, a lot of energy to try to get this dog to trust people again, or this cat to to I think it was cat to um trust people and to rehabilitate like huge effort. I'm almost feeling like they made years of effort and then the animal died anyway. So it's almost like that. Sorry, guys. Sorry, Josie. But this is what I'm feeling right now. So tell me, you're saying other people are coming through. Okay. Okay. So there's an Amy, Amy Freeman. Let me see if I can find her. Well, I hate to lose this girl though. I know. Okay. Amy Freeman. She said that she had a Persian, um, smoky, had a back issue and only came to me. And then she says, lost control of his ability to use his legs, had a blood clot. Hmm. Um, wasn't paralyzed, just easier to, oh, easier to say. Okay. Hmm. So I don't know. Persian, that would be a cat. Yeah. Yeah, this is really hard. Um, Okay, Amy, if this is your cat, um, what usually... What you, so what did you say about a J name? What, what, what was that about? Um, let me ask. J? Yeah, I feel like somebody that they were connected to had a J name. Huh. Like James or Jamie. And, um... Oh, um... I feel like the person who had this animal tried everything to, you know, rehabilitate surgeries, whatever it was to get the back issue or the um, issues under control. And it never really, I mean, it helped, but it didn't fix it. Okay. Hang on. Amy's middle name, I think it's Joelle and her dad's name is James. Okay. James. So Jamie, I think this is you. I think this is your cat. It's a Persian. It's a cat, right? Yes. Okay. Oh, God. As soon as we get the reference, the pain will go away. That's why I feel like I get hijacked. Because when spirit comes through with something they want to uh, focus on, I will get, um, like, references and issues in my body that will hurt. Oh, oh, and, oh she said that her Amy's cat's name was with a J. Okay. 
Okay. You're a cat. So I feel like you tried everything that you could. You probably even invested more money than you could afford. And you were wondering whether or not you should do more. I will tell you, oh my God, finally my back is like relieving. That's what it is. It's you. Um, so this beautiful Persian animal came to you and said, you've done everything. You raised the money or spent the money that you could. Nothing more you could have done could have fixed it. This is an internal back issue that, that um, affected every other organ. So organs were beginning to shut down. You're probably wondering why the cat tries to eat and then throw up or tries to eat and then doesn't poop right, something like that. And the whole time she's saying, I just want to go. I appreciate and love that you loved. And then also that singling you out as, as, only loving certain people and not being very friendly with other people. And that's only because they're like, look, I have only limited amount of energy to give and I can only give it to you because you're the one who's trying so hard. Go ahead. Did you, were you going to say something, Lisa? No. no. Okay. So, I so Amy, I just have to tell you that you did everything you could and you did the right th thing. And sometimes when animals act up for us and we're wondering, like, why? Why are they unfriendly when everybody around them is trying to give them love and affection? Well, they have an internal pain or problem going on. And um, there are psychics that do animal connection or animal communication. And I highly recommend you that seek them out to figure out, you know, how you can communicate with your animal. But I think you did a great job with this one. And I think they'll show you signs. So I actually see this cat like jumping on and scratching on the wall, which to me shows me like 1111 or something else going on the wall that looks like 111. Okay. The only other thing I can tell you is that there's a liver or um, lower abdomen issue on the right that will not get healed. Could never have been healed. Okay. That's all I see. All right. Okay. Josie. Josie. Gizmo died one week after I was in Vegas shooting it. Um, uh, wow. Okay. So Josie, um, I have a special connection to the Las Vegas shooting because my ex-husband was there and he was in a wheelchair. And when the shooting started, because he had a double knee surgery and was in a wheelchair, he couldn't get out. So he was kind of just barely missed by bullets. And I have a special like connection with that event. Um, so I'm going to ask for your baby girl gizmo. Um, I understand that you felt that you had a special need, but let me ask about your animal energy here and, and find out why it was they couldn't stay with you. Well, shit, that's not at all what I'm feeling. Gizmo. I'm seeing a very small animal. I think it's a dog, but it with weird ears, so it could be a cat. But um, I don't think that that's at all what took place. Um, I think that the reason you survived this was because of Gizmo. So Gizmo took all the energy that could have come toward you and took it themselves to go ahead and pass away and, and take that energy into spirit. Um, I also think that you've probably experienced many things since that animal died. I think it's small. I think it's a, let me ask. I don't know. I'm just seeing this weird little small animal. Um, I think it's a cat, but, um, and that animals try really hard to take all of your emotional energy and help you heal. Um, that was a completely traumatic event. And if, if that animal had not 
gone ahead and taken all that energy and, and been willing to pass into spirit for you, you would have been left with a lot more trauma. I get that this is, this is weird. As soon as I was again, questioning as a dog or a cat, I felt tapping on your toe, like toe, toe, like one, two, three under a table. And like, you might look to see if they're there a sign that they're still with you and trying to help you through this, but really gathered a lot of energy so that you would survive this. You know, please don't ever think that animals would ever leave you before you needed them. Their whole role is to be for you when you need them. If they left, it's because it could have been worse if they stayed. You could have been, um, tap, tap, tap. So I keep hearing around you, tap, 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 one, 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 three, three, three. And, and these signs that you were meant to survive that event and that this little animal really meant to take all this energy away so you could move on and it's time to move on. But I do see one, 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 three, 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 and tap, tap, tap. Okay. It's not that gizmo left at the worst possible time. No, no. She came to you and stayed with you at the worst possible time and then took that energy away. Listen, animals, their entire being is to be there for you. Huh. Oh, I just saw a, a little white light, which tells me that Gizmo will come to you in a new animal, new dog or a new cat, if you want. But it was like a little white light came down and went, like, got my attention. Oh, um, I know this is uh, probably a good cry ahead. But my, my heart and my, I felt like my breathing went kind of a little bit crazy and I felt like I had to cry. And then this little new animal comes in. You're going to get a new animal. And I think it's a tiny little white dog. And this is your new gizmo. Okay, go on. <sighs> yeah. Okay, so Heather wants to talk to Nacho, please. Okay, so um, I think Nacho is a small, I'm hearing barking. I think it's a dog. Um, very talkative, but very personable. A um, lot of personality. You know, the energy around what I'm feeling about this animal is... Um, high vibration, fast pace, young energy. And usually if we've lost a, a dog, it's because they grew old and died, but this doesn't feel old. So Heather, let me know if you lost a little dog that was young. Um, if so, that might be Nacho, but, um, and I'm hearing a lot of, um, a lot of energy, a lot of interaction, a lot of talk, a lot of play. And do you have two children that, um, you had since the, or at the time the dog passed, because I feel like they're like rotating around your children and, um, looking after them. Okay. And that, um, your children are pretty advanced and maybe, um, would have had trouble coming in or had issues you know, in childhood or infancy, let me know if that makes sense. Because I feel like not just like a little uh, angel energy around two children. So let me know if that makes sense. And if so, then I think that this dog would, or little animal, I think it's a dog, would have passed. It's a, she just said it was a 19-year-old chihuahua. 
Okay. Oh, and yes, I have two kids. They're adults. So your dog is looking over. Okay, this is exciting. So uh, Nacho's looking over your children to bring in two more children for them. And uh, and we'll probably always be around your, your family. Uh, but there's two little ones in spirit that are coming through. Oh, this is super exciting. Okay. And that someday you might see, you know, traits with the nacho that are either with your grandchildren or with another dog that will come, they will get at the same time. Okay. I had a feeling it was a chihuahua. Oh, good. Lala. Okay. But of course the name nacho sounds like that. So I didn't say that, but I had a feeling. All right. Okay. Uh, Coco, uh, Serrano wants to know about Coco. Hold on one sec. Hmm. This isn't what I expected with that name, but what I'm seeing is a very large dog and it looks brown and large or dark in color and large. And it's laying down with its head on its hands like this. Mellow, cool. I suppose a little bit older, but not always have been old since you got him. So now I'm thinking. Um, the feeling to me about this is that this dog went from like being okay and everything great to suddenly not. I think it's so much so, so that you didn't even have time to make a decision or to go like, do we have to get help or take him to the doctor? It just went like, no. So let me know if that fits Serrano with an older, bigger, dark colored dog laying down, stretching out and laying down. I also feel like um, sometimes you guys, we think that if we don't make the right decision for our animals, then we're not making the right decisions for ourselves. So we think that, you know, what we do and how we live our lives is wrong. And we beat ourselves up so much for, you know, maybe making the wrong decisions for them that we carry it over in our lives. Oh, this is really interesting about Coco because I kind of feel like that's the case. Like you're feeling like you're making the wrong decisions for yourself or you're not trusting yourself that you're doing right. And I think you truly are. Let me know if that makes sense. Let me know if that makes sense. Why your animal would come back and tell you you're doing okay. Like quit, quit judging your decisions and quit beating yourself up for things you're deciding and making. Okay. And the other thing I'll say about that is it should be decisions that are right for you and not everybody else all the time. Okay. And oh, go ahead. Uh, well, um, one of the other things I just want to say about, um, I think the reason that people connect with animals is because, you know, I have a daughter and she's 30 through almost 33 and her whole um, presence about why she connects with animals so much is because she's, she says to me, they have no nuance. Animals have no nuance. They are just how they are. And their truth is how their truth is. So if we, if we let go of our human nuance and look at animals and go like, like literally believe them for what they are. If they're growling, they're upset. If they're sleeping, they're tired. If they're eating, they're hungry. If they're whatever they're doing, that is true for them. And they come into our lives to bring that authenticity and that truth for us. And we miss it every time because we try to make them human and they are not human. They're way beyond that. They are high vibration than human. And I think that the reason that it's valuable to maybe talk to your 
you know, your pets or, or your little animals that have passed is to see what they have to say about how you treated them, about how you understood them, about maybe forgiving yourself for not doing it perfect or for giving yourself for going like, uh, I love it when people go, well, they were my baby. The, and I'm like, yeah, they should be. That they, they are a higher vibration. They're not just meant to be left in a yard somewhere and, and forgotten. They are beings that came into your experience to teach you something. And when you get that, your spirit grows. So, and I truly believe that they're on a higher vibration, which means that they're still going to be around you. They're, they're still going to act as if they're still there. Put a bowl of water out, invite them to sit next to you on the couch. You're going to feel them. You're going to, you're going to have them around you. And I truly believe that that pets are still a part of your life. They're still a part of you. They love you so much unconditionally. And that's why we love them. Okay. What were you going to say? You want, oh, I was just going to say, do you want to do your discount code? Oh, yeah. Let's do it. Okay. So thank you for staying to the end. Here's your discount code. Now, this will apply to anything you want to do. Any personal reading you want, 15% off. There's a code FBLIVE0209. So Facebook Live, um, uh, February 9th. And if you put that in within the next, what, what, till Sunday? Yeah. Um, it doesn't matter when you book, but book before that date and you'll get that code. So, uh, thank you guys for joining us tonight. Can you just also tell them about your, your love special right now? That yes. So since we are in February and I believe in love and I truly believe that the reason you want to connect with your animals is because you love them and they love you. And I also believe that we connect with other loved ones in spirit and loved ones in person because that is the ultimate spiritual gain. All we need is love. So we have a special this February called All You Need Is Love. And you can book like a 15 minute, 30 minute, whatever, to just ask questions about your loved ones and your loved life. And I am kind of amazed about how this is going. Like I'm not in relationship and somehow spirit still comes through and blasts out amazing information about your love life, your future, your current relationship. And I, I was really wondering if I should do this, but spirit said I should. And every reading I've done has been amazing and just amazing. And it, it not only tells you where you're at, but what to look forward to and what you can do to better open the opportunity to create the love life that you want. It's been amazing. Please take advantage of the love. Um, all you need is love opportunity in, in they, spirit. They can find that information on your Facebook page or your website. And this discount will not apply since that is already so discounted. Yeah, it's super discounted. So this is a different thing. Do this discount with pet, pet readings, uh, personal readings, all kinds of other stuff. But the February um, opportunity that we have is a whole separate thing. It's already super discounted, so this uh, code won't apply. But go ahead and give it a go. All my work is guaranteed. If you don't get your answers, you don't pay. So I thank you guys so much. And thank you for, you know, just opening up your heart to your, your loved ones in spirit and your little fur babies in spirit. I thank you very much. Have a good night and stay in spirit.